Uh, patter, 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 test stream. I need a noise for this. <coughs> and not the noise of me coughing. Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, I was doing a little bit of patter there because it, there is a delay between uh, when I start uh, the stream on my end and when Twitch recognizes that I've started the stream. I was hosting EVN, E V I E A N. Uh, if you get a chance, watch her. She's fantastic. Um, but now it's. I'm going to go ahead and stream now myself. Woohoo! Okay, so previously we came up with this beautiful diagram for the umbra of, a, uh, of an eclipse. Um, sorry, I'm getting pop ups here that I have to not ignore. Well, I do ignore them, but it takes a second to ignore them. Okay, so we have this beautiful diagram here of an umbra that I like so much that I just kind of want to keep it up here forever. Uh, but now we need to talk about the penumbra. The umbra is where, if you're inside of the umbra here, the umbral cone, uh, you will see a total eclipse of S by T. This is, of course, assuming S is a light-generating body like the sun, and T is a body that doesn't generate light like pretty much everything else in the solar system, which actually just reflects light. Unless, of course, you believe in the Stefan Boltzmann law, which says, yes, they do emit light, but not the kind of light we can see. So now let's go ahead and do the penumbra, which is where there's a partial eclipse. And I think we can just go straight to doing a new one here. We'll call it penumbra. Uh, so it's kind of like the umbra, but not quite. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use pretty much the same setup we had, assuming it actually comes up, we had before, but we're going to put a little bit more room between T and S because the penumbra is going to be between the two of them. It's not going to be to the left of T and S. So we're going to give a little bit of more room between T and S, um, assuming this is this is going to let us do that. Um, did I use file save or file? I thought I did file new. Uh, hmm. Mm, that's not what I meant to do. File, new. Okay, I'm sorry, I guess I need to do this one saved. And then I think I screwed that up somehow. There we go, here's a new one. Um, now let me save this one as penumbra, even though we haven't done anything with it yet. So we get these correct. No, no, be gone from this place. Um, penumbra. It's going to be public. You're free to come look at it if this is the URL you'll need. Okay, fantastic. So now we're going to go ahead and we're still going to put T at the center here. We're still going to make it, I think, um, a circle of uh, center and radius. Center is going to be there. Radius is going to be two. Still going to be one of those suckers. And uh, I think we're going to, first of all, uh, no, 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 be gone, be gone, be gone. Uh, Stand by. Please stand by. Uh, and I guess we need to uh, do a... Uh, we don't want to show the label. Um, the center point is actually, I guess, not really part of the circle. I mean, it defines the circle. But we're going to call this plant... Uh, plant. We're going to call this plant T. Or planet. Or actually, it's just a circle that's pretending to be a planet. Okay, and then we're going to put over here, um, I think we can do um, 15 to 9, maybe? No, let's see. 13 to 9, I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have it uh, centered at 13, 0 with a, uh, with a radius of 4, is what that means. Assuming I can figure out how to do this. 13, radius 4, and there we have it. And once again, we're going to edit. That was kind of cool. Not what I meant to do, but it was kind of cool. All right. So we don't want that one. We do want this one, but we don't want it to show its uh, label. Um, so we're going to get rid of that. And instead, we're going to put the label here. Just randomly inventing points. We are going to put the label here. And this all the action here is going to occur in the middle. So this is, this is OK. So we are going to go ahead and, ooh, nope, the name is going to be S. So I think we're all happy now. Um, and we will be drawing in things like uh, radiuses, assists, and stuff. 
Uh, but for right now, let me go ahead and draw the tangent lines. Um, okay, so circle one, circle two, and as always, we were getting way too many of them. Um, we don't need this one, but as we learned previously, um, we really can't. Uh, we really can't delete it because bad things happen. Uh, it deletes all of them, so we're going to select it. I'm going to say don't show it. Uh, I'm going to say select it and don't show it. Okay. Wait. Said select it and do not show it. There we go. All right. Fantastic. What am I doing? No, 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 no. I went back to this mouse. Okay. No. What the hell? That was not cool. Okay, now. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so now we have, um, this is the penumbral cone, so if you're, you're sort of to the left here, you're seeing a partial eclipse. If you're here, of course, you're not really seeing anything, I mean, you're still seeing S and T. The only cool thing about this point is that the angular radii are the same, um, as, you know, but not necessarily the same as they would be at the penumbral cone point that we saw in the last diagram. Okay, so we have this, and I'm tempted to move stuff around, but I'm not going to. Um, we want to get this point here, uh, let's see, um, yes, so in this case, by the way, the ST is going to be this vector here, we might as well draw it in, uh, vector from here to here, uh, and we're going to go ahead and make it, we're going to make it, we're not going to do that, we're going to make it shiny. We're going to change the color and, of course, change the name. So let's go to settings over here. The uh, the I think in the other one I called it TS because I wanted to be clever because it goes from T to S. Uh, but it is a distance, so I think ST is fine. I did change the other one to ST when no one was watching. Uh, this one we're just going to call ST right from the beginning. And the color of this is going to be a very nice sort of red color. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so that's ST. And once again, we're going to be looking at the half angles, not the full angles. Um, now, one interesting thing about this is I don't... Yeah, let's go ahead and draw some other stuff in. What's sort of interesting about this is we don't actually know what this distance from here to here is. And that's the distance we're trying to find. Um, so let me see if we can f find... I guess we should call this point P. You know what? Yeah, actually, we should not have done this. We should have... Uh, the hell? Vector be gone. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're already selecting it. So we're going to call this point P, and I think it's the point of an intersection. Uh, let's see. Segment. Angle bisector. There's somewhere here that it says intersection. Uh, not in a place you can find. Oh, hang on. Intersect. We intersect this with this to get not A. We're going to call it p point P, but but yes, this is the... Or we're going to call it point B or point C or point D. Hang on. I'm creating points like crazy. All right. Uh, now we go back over here. This will be the magic point P. I don't know why I'm bothering to move it before I change its name. This is going to be point P. And uh, I think it can stay the color that it is. I think that's fine. So really the two vectors we're going to have this time are going to be uh, <laughs> TP. That's funny because it sounds like toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, I have that kind of sense of humor. Uh, vector goes from here to here. Uh, this vector we will go ahead and... Uh, uh -huh, settings. Uh, we will go ahead and give it the name. I'm going to say PT, I think, because I will use that in the previous one. And the distances are... I want to give them consistent names. God damn it, no. Someone shoot me. Okay. Um, and then we'll go ahead and... Uh, just really... And we'll go ahead and make this a nice, lovely color that is, like, reddish or something. Yes, there it is. That's my semi-gay red color. OK. 
Okay. And then we're going to need PS, which I guess we can leave as PS or SP. It'd be one of the two. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, this is actually the distance we're trying to find is PT, which, of course. Um, and PS, which, uh, of course, we know together make up TS. I wonder if there's a way to... Huh. Because in this situation, we have overlapping lines, which we didn't have previously. Um, so I guess we can... I think we don't have to worry about that too much. We might. But for right now, I'm just going to say it goes from here to here. And then we go back over... Oh, we could actually have just done this and done settings. Uh, so this is going to be uh, SP. And it's going to be the lovely color of green. I think that works nicely. Okay, so we have PT and SP. Uh, both going backwards in terms of names, but that's not important. Um, so now we're trying to find where this point is. And um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, so now let's find the intersection between this line and this point where we can draw here STR. So let's go ahead and do that. Intersect this sucker with this sucker. Beautiful. We don't need the name, though. Um, so don't show the label. Do show the point. And, you know, actually, let me go ahead and change the color of this because I think we decided earlier uh, that we're going to use that sort of pink color for the radii. So we don't want to use it here. We want to use, let's say, that looks, that's a little bit too light, actually. That looks gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do, actually, let's go ahead and do this intersection point um, of this line with this circle. Okay. Once again, we don't actually need the, um, we don't actually need the name, so we won't show that name. And make sure we don't so we go back to our sort of regular dragging mode. Okay, so now we have, uh, we're going to draw SR and TR. Um, let's in fact go ahead and do that. Vector from here to here. But for once I'm going to actually use it correctly. Vector from here to here. Now we can go back to what we, to this, so we don't accidentally, um, we don't accidentally overwrite it. Uh, the name here is going to be TR. It doesn't actually matter what the name is, but um, color is going to be that semi-gay pink. I really need to stop saying that because I'm pretty sure I'm offending somebody when I do that. So if you are gay and I'm offending you, uh, let me know. Alright, so now we can go over here and do the settings for this one. This is length SR and we'll give it the same color which I will stop calling gay pink. So I guess we're going to do this. Well, we could probably... It doesn't really matter. Okay, and um, we're going to draw the angles. This angle here, which is a right angle, and this angle here, which is a right angle, which is very similar to what we did before. Angle, point P, point this sucker, point this sucker. And we do not want to say that, we don't want to give a, we don't need to say that alpha equals 90. We just want to give it, um, we just want to give it an angle. There we go. And the same thing is going to go for PT and unnamed point here. It goes a lot faster when you've done it once. I mean, for a slightly different problem, but still. And no, I did not mean to do that. Undo. That was pointless of me. I meant to do this this and this. Wow, no, didn't mean to do that either. Alright, 93rd time's a charm. I think it's going to be from here to here to here. And once again, we do not want the label. We just want to know that it's a right angle. Okay. Okay. So we have our two right angles, our PT, our... Um, SP and RSR. I think that's pretty much all we can do now. I mean, we do want to get this angle at some point. Um, so now, how do we compute PT is what I'm trying to figure out. Um, uh, I guess we need to figure out this angle. Well, yeah, because th this is going to be the um, 
these four angles are all the same for different reasons, but well, by symmetry and by double symmetry and by vertical angles. Um, so I guess this is the angle we are actually trying to find out, which is equal to this angle, which is equal to this angle, which is equal to this angle. Um, and it's probably best if we figured it out from here. That's going to be angle P blah 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 S. So let's go ahead and draw that. P unnamed point and then S. And that's not what I meant to do. Rather, I meant to say SP unnamed point. So I don't know how to do angles anymore. I've lost my freaking mind. Okay, now we will make that bigger and less uh, without a label on it. So let's go ahead and do that. Show label no. But we will increase the size. Okay. Alrighty, gorgeous. So what do we know about angle? I guess we need to give it a name, actually. Let's call it angle U because we, it's what we call it. Actually, this will be the penumbral angle. We're going to call it angle U because I want to. Um, label is the name. The name is U. Okay. So I think we're good now. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm so I, ha I like it so much. I want to save it. Okay. Okay. So what we're trying to do is figure out angle U, and we're trying to figure out PT. And we know PT plus SP is equal to ST. So we just need to figure out one of them. Alrighty. Now let's see what we have here. Can we use Pyth can't use Pythagoras' theorem there? Um. So we have opposite. Do we? Is this actually non-trivial? Huh. I find I get the feeling this is trivial, and I'm just not seeing it. Um. So we know TR. We don't know PT. We know SR. We know the total distance. And we don't really know anything about this side. I mean, we could compute it using a Pythagorean theorem, but that doesn't help us any. Um, saving online has failed. Please check that you're logged in. Well, okay. Um, stand by, stand by. Um... I do not appear to be streaming live. Uh, something's wrong. You should be seeing my lovely... Um, my lovely penumbral diagram. But according to this, you are seeing my lovely umbral diagram, which is not what I'm displaying. Also, this time says 2159. So that is not cool. So let's see what the hell happened there. Stand by, stand by, please stand by. Um, let me do this real quick. Everything will go dark now. Wow. This is being aggressively bad. Uh, so I guess apologies for the last 19 minutes you have not been seeing this beautiful diagram I've been creating. Um, let's see how we can fix this. Maybe it's a 2020, Y2020 error, Y2.02 error. Uh, although I don't think it is actually. Let me go ahead and um, make the VLC source invisible for a second. Let me go ahead and remove um, this source, which is... 3840's A. Let me re add it. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Not goodness things have happened. Okay, let me go ahead and. Oh, let me unhide it real quick. Yeah, that's not looking too good. 
All right, am I? Stand by. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the entire source and then re-add it. So until I d while I do that, you can listen to me babbling incoherently because I don't have music. I could try singing. Uh, that's generally considered a very bad idea, though, because I'm a terrible singer. And also, the songs I know are from the '60s, '70s, and other eras that no one actually wants to listen to. All right, gonna try it one more time. Um. Let's see if we can get this working any better. Maybe, maybe you know what, 2020 decided to hell with it. My system's going to just stop streaming. Okay, this is looking better. Um, and let me resize the sucker. Okay, let's see if we're back on doing good stuff here. Okay, it looks like we are back on now, and now you can see the beautiful penumbral diagram I drew while you were not looking. And also you can see that it is now 2020 in the Greenwich Mean Time Zone, although it is still 2019 here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay, but hopefully, um, well, this is the shiny penumbral diagram. This will show us where uh, everything in this area that's sort of off the screen here will be viewing a partial eclipse or a, s or, or a total eclipse, but at least, at least a partial eclipse. Okay, um, now that we've done that, let's see if we can solve our math problem, which is uh, we're trying to figure out the length of PT or SP, which is sort of the same thing, um, which is also similar to figuring out the angle U, which has to be equal here, um, because this angle, well, these are vertical angles here, and these are the half of the word vertical angles. So um, they're, all, they're all equal to U. Um, so we do know the, um, I don't know if there's an easy way, there should be a really easy way to do this. I'm, I'm missing something really obvious here. Um, and I'm wondering if I were to draw a line between these two, if that would, that would that's not really going to be helpful, is it? I'm trying to find a triangle where this is the uh, this is the base. In theory, I guess I could sort of extend TR and SR uh, to see if they eventually, well, they will eventually intersect because they're not parallel, uh, and then see if there's anything I can do with that. I don't, um, I don't think there is, actually. Um, I mean, I could drop a perpendicular down to here, but, but it's getting a little bit ugly for that, so let's... Um, uh, any anyone in the uh, you know if anyone is in the chat which I don't think anyone actually is I mean there are but there aren't um, let me know what you think how we could solve this problem without going to too much uh, ugliness because it does seem the other problem we had which I think I can actually bring up if I want to um, let's see how good I am at this I should be able to load the other problem in here while we're looking at this problem here so let's open Umbra and it's loading. Beautiful. So this is the umbra. This is the penumbra. Umbra, penumbra. Which looks better, one or two? Okay. So here we were just able to figure out this is the only value we needed, and we just basically used the the fact that the sine of this is this over uh, this. So over here, the sine of this angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is fine, but we don't know what the hypotenuse actually is uh, because it is we know the length with the other one. So I guess we're going to need to set up a little bit of a uh, little bit of some formulas here, a little bit of some formulas here. That I said that. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do here. I was hoping to avoid this, but um, the sine of u. The sine of u makes me. Uh, let's go ahead and write this in mathics notation since we are going to put it in to mathics. Is um, sr over sp, which is fine. Uh, and the sine of u is equal to, oh, okay, I think I see how we can do this. And the sine of u is equal to um, uh, tr over pt, but we can also write pt as st minus uh, sp, which may help. Um, so what we can say here is solve sr over sp equal equal tr over st minus sp. Um, for the only value we don't have, which I believe is sp. Yeah, it is. And I guess if I were really clever, I'd want to solve it for, um, for pt, but whatever. This is, this, this should be more than, this should be more than fine. Okay. 
and we get SP is equal to S this this sucker here. Let's go ahead and write that down. I mean, cut and paste it. Um, yeah, so this gives us a, a formula for uh, SR over SP is equal to this. No, it doesn't. That's the thing I'm trying to solve. That's the thing I want to copy. Um, so SP is equal to SR times ST over... Again, not a very difficult formula here. Um, and I guess PT is going to be ST minus that. And I guess that might be a little bit more important because that is sort of the thing that we're we're using is our measurement from um, our measurement from T, not from S. So that's oh, that's even easier. That's ST TR over SR plus TR. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so this gives us um, that's what PT is equal to. And the other thing we know is that PT plus SP is equal to ST, which is a given. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our text box up and going. Uh, and we'll start off with the text that is very nice, which is, uh, uh, boy, I wish I'd put a label here. Uh, PT is equal to this, I'm almost sure. Um, and just to be sure here, we're going to say Instead of saying SP here, we're going to say ST minus PT. And over here, we're going to say um, PT. So we get... Right. Um, wait, that should be solvable. Oh, this one. Okay, let's take a look at the um, that one you liked, and this time we're saying TR over TP is equal to TR over ST minus PT. Solve that for TP and simplify. Like a vault. All right, hang on. Let's see if we can. I want to make sure we're not doing this wrong. So let's try it again. This time I'm going to solve for TP instead of for SP, which is really not that much of a deal, big deal. But anyway, we know that the arc sine of u, I'm sorry, the sine of u, which really sounds like a song now, is TR over PT. So we know that, and we know that it's equal to um, SR over quantity um, ST minus SP. And we want a solution for PT. That should work. Let's go ahead and uh, it might have some uh, issues because we did another s solution with it. Okay. That doesn't even look like it's going to simplify. But we always try. Hmm. Hmm. Something is wrong here. Um. Yes, because what I meant to say here is that it's SR uh, over SP, which is ST minus PT. That's what I meant to say. So, and that is the kind of, that's the kind of thing I was hoping we'd get. Okay, so that that's kind of the value. It's going to be, you know, symmetric to the other one. But this way we can say that um, PT, you know, every time I either cut and paste the wrong thing or mathematica mathematics is being weird to me. So here we have uh, PT equals ST times TR over SR plus TR. Um, I don't think we even need to compute S SP here because we we're just going to say PT plus SP well actually we can't say that. We have to say ST equals alright hang on 
ST equals PT plus SP. But that's not correct because we ST is a known value. So what we have to say is that SP is equal to ST minus PT, which is so this value is this value minus this value. That's fine. Uh, I'm trying to get all these formulas down and then we're going to cut and paste them all into a text box. Um, so angle U is the arc sine um, of TR over PT. And we, we're, we're going to go ahead and define PT to be equal to this now because we want to use it like that. Um, and so we have the arc, we'll leave the arc sign off right now. Uh, it's going to be of, uh, yeah, getting a little bit staggered here. TR over PT. So TR over PT. I was going to say simplify, but that doesn't really simplify that much more than that, does it? Uh, in fact, it's so bad that I'm going to not even trust it. I'm going to do it as a hard computation. It's gorgeous. So it's the arc sine of SR plus TR over ST. Uh, SR plus TR over ST. Yeah, let me actually just copy this because I can't uh, apparently remember for more than a tenth of a second. Alright, so this is what this is. That's K. Um, so we can, that's, that's good to go there. And we can tighten it up a little bit. And now we want the, uh, this is the arc sign, which is cool. Uh, we, ooh, okay, 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 wants it this way. Uh, no, wants it this, I maybe need to stop jumping between notations. Tan of U. And I think this is where we ran into the same issue here, that we don't really want square roots in our answer. So we're going to say tan of u squared. Simplify that. Yeah, not great, but I think we had the same problem with the other one. Um, this is probably the best we're going to be able to do. So this is the slope squared. Um, what the hell? Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is, we ran into the same issues last time. I'm going to double check, but I'm pretty sure what happened here is we, um, it's still ugly as the square, but it's much less ugly this way. So we were, we're going to say something like m squared equals this. Um, or technically we should say that m is plus or minus that because, the square root of that, because we're going to have two m's here. But let me go back to our other uh, reference here. Yeah, we never bothered to actually define um, uh, any other point. So we have U, M, and now, of course, in order to do that, we're going to need um, we're going to need um, the two lines here that we're defining. Uh, I guess this one's the one with the positive slope. This one's the one with the negative slope. Um, but I kind of like. Yeah, I guess one of the problems here is we're using our SR and our TR um, in the same sort of upper position, and in order to do this with any sort of um, any sort of uh, consistency, we actually want them on. We we want this for this one and other for this one. We want the sort of opposite sides um, of them. Um, I think. Um. Well, I, maybe we can still get away with this. Let's see. Yeah, we do still need to compute these points, but maybe we don't need to be this ugly about it. All right, so let's go ahead and compute. Um, uh, let's see, because I want to get rid of these these tangent lines and replace them with line segments. Uh, we have this, we have this, we need a point here. Uh, intersect, we want to intersect this sucker with this sucker, and we intersect this sucker with this sucker. Um, and then we want to um, 
draw a, I think just a regular old mine segment from here to here, and another one from here to here. Now we can get rid of the um, stupid affine, whatever the hell it is. Common tangents of blah, blah, blah. Um, be a little bit careful here. Yep, somehow I knew that was going to happen. Um, I guess because when you delete, well, actually, hang on. We could, I think we we learned we can just make this like not show it. Do not show yourself. Do not show yourself in this place. Okay, so now we have just the penumbral lines that we need. Let's get rid of the stupid um, stupid labels. Okay. No label for this line. Sorry for this point, obviously. No label for you. No label for you. No soup for you. Okay. So I think we are good now. Um, and so this line here is going to have the slope of uh, y equals mx plus b, where we're defining mx and b. Um, so yeah, I think we can actually label this line like that. No, 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 do not delete settings. Um, so we do want to label, but we don't want labels going to be the caption. The caption is going to be y equals mx plus b. Um, that should be it. And again, we're probably going to move this like so it's over here. And here, we will already know that it's going to be y equals minus x minus b. It's the, um, yes, by symmetry, the b intercepts are going to be negatives of each other. So let's go ahead and do that. y equals minus x minus b. Uh, the label will be the caption. And we will move this out a little bit so it's like this. Okay, awesome. Uh, so now all we need to do is the value of b, which we found out last time was really easy to compute in um, in one of these cases. Um, let's see now, the value of b is going to be, well, we know that um, for point p, uh, we know that 0 equals m times whatever p, t okay, we, so we do have pt here. Hang on. Right. So 0 equals equals m times pt plus b, we know that. Um, I'm curious is if this comes out easy, but it probably won't. It's not too bad, actually. Um, but if 0 is going to equal m uh, times pt, we can just say that... Uh, so here, here the, the intercepts are flipped. For the positive line, the intercept's going to be negative. For the negative line, the intercept's going to be positive. So we need to, we need to be sort of aware of that. Um, and so here it's just going to be... Um, Right, sorry, if, um, so if m times pt, that's the x value, plus b is 0, b is negative m times pt. Makes sense. We go from here down to there. And I think that's, th th we had it sort of flipped in the other one. Uh, but, but I think these are the correct equations. We will now use our text box. Um, and put them in. And it doesn't really matter how we do this because we're going to have to reformat it a little bit anyway. Um, I'm sort of hesitant to actually put in um, SP. I don't think that's actually valuable to us, but we'll go ahead and do it for right now. Uh, and this is not a LaTeX formula. This is a wonderful text thing will bob okay so we're here let's go ahead and give this a white background so it doesn't um, so it background color is going to be white there we go. And we can move around a little bit more, I guess. Okay. 
hang on. We have an extra new line showing up again, as always. Delete. There we go. I don't know how that happens. Um, okay. Okay. Let's bring this down a little bit now. Okay, so now we have our uh, umbral and penumbral cones. Um, I guess we have to be a little bit careful with our directions here because the penumbral cone is actually defined over here. Uh, if you're here, you can see the sun. If you're here, you can see the sun. If you're to the left of T, you cannot see the sun. That is where the penumbral cone. Um, so maybe. Oh yeah. I mean, we kind of. I guess, and this is one of the cases where we actually do want to sort of extend these lines a little bit further out. Um, okay, so we'll let's go ahead and let's see. Is there a way to extend this line without? Um, can I change it from a segment to a line between C and B? I can. Can I change it to a ray? I don't think it understands what a ray is, unless I've, I've screwed something up. Oh, unless I mean a ray from B to C. Nice. I didn't know I could do that. Um, it's gorgeous. You're gorgeous, as John Lithgow used to say on uh, uh, on uh, Third Rock. So that's actually kind of nice that you can change the type of it. So if I say ray here, I'll probably get it wrong. But if I say ray D to A, I will probably get it right. No, not ray A to A. That would be a very strange ray. Okay, here we go. All right. Now the only nice thing would be if. Um, I guess over here I can put the word penumbra in really large letters so we know what the penumbra is. So over here you can see this. Da -da 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 -da. Over here you're in the you're in the anti-umbra. I don't know what that means. But over here you're in the penumbra. Yeah, okay, so let's do this. And if we're gonna do this, we should probably do something similar for umbra, but um But the problem is the umbra is a heck of a lot smaller. Uh, that's fine. How do I get the font size up to 10 billion? Mm, can I do that? Penumbra. I mean, this whole thing is the penumbra. Oh, I bet you there's a style option for uh, text, color, position, advanced. There's no size? Come on. That looks kind of, that looks like a freaking good size to me. Like, that may be too big. Um, right. That, but at least we, we got it. Um, all right. Let's, let's go down to, uh, do we have, oh, yeah, we were an extra large, so pin number, that should be fine. Okay. Um kind of tempted not to show the axis labels because they're not really important. Let's see if we can, oh, we can apparently edit the axes. Uh, axes, grid. Uh, too much. Uh, y axis, that's fine. Standard view, graphics, zoom to fit. Turn over the numbers here, if we, if at all possible. But I mean, at some point, I probably won't care. Oh, our standard views that okay. Penumbra. Um. All right. Can we can we get rid of these numbers here? Axis grid x axis colon. That's the zoom. Graphics. Um. Show axis. Yeah, you betcha. X axis. We want. y-axis we want. It's not freaking bad looking. What happens if we don't show the... No, I, we definitely want to show the x-axis. Because we do need to know that we are uh, at the x-axis. So 
this is the penumbra. Um, I just feel like we need to put more in here, so we will. Partial Eclipse. Does that look any better? And once again, for some reason, it just seems to think there's a new line there. Okay, now... Um... Yeah, now it's... We're now we're nitpicking. Um, of course, I could put a separate uh, partial eclipse below it, but let's see. Um, just because I'm really a partial eclipse. Pert eclipse. There we go. That looks terrible. But we're going to go with it. Penumbra, partial eclipse. Okay, so we have this beautiful diagram here, which I'm going to save now. That is the penumbra. And... Okay. 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 I'm just saying okay several times for no good reason. Alright, let's go back to the umbral one. I want to make a minor change here. So now this is... This area here is the umbra. Um, And the problem with if I move this, what happens? Nothing. Well, probably because it's stuck to something, but let's see. Um, can we do a flood fill? As if you would know. Um, let's see, can we do like a... Um, and we could do like a little quirky arrow here that says this is the umbra. This is if you're in this point, you're seeing a total eclipse. Um, but let's see if we can... Um, oh cool, there's a way to measure slope. Image, button, checkbox, slider... Uh, copy. I thought this was flood fill for a second, which would have been great. Um, okay, let's see. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, rigid polygon. I mean, we could try to draw a rigid polygon that looks like extremum roots. Yeah, I mean, we could try to draw like a like a semicircular arc or something. That uh, it's actually pretty complicated, though. Uh, slider, tater, to turn. All right, screw it. All right, so this is the umbra here. We're just going to have to kind of deal with that. Um, so now, I guess the most interesting part of all this is now that we know what our um, umbra and penumbra look like. Um, how do we know if a given sphere is inside the penumbra or the umbra? So let's make sure we've have got all of this correct. Um, we're always having both S and T be on, well right now we're having them be on the x-axis. In reality they will be have a different y value, but they will be parallel to each other on the x-axis by, uh, by our transformation. I think we are going to make sure that S is greater than T in the sense that we're going to arrange it so the sx value is greater than the tx value, um, which also means we'll have to change the uh, position of um, qr, obviously. Th everything's going to get flipped by the x-axis. And I don't think we care if y is positive or negative. I don't think that's going to affect our results any. Um, so 
so let's see here um, Uh, so I guess the question is, um, we know the the, the um, formulas for the two lines. We know... Wow, really? Oh, this looks much nicer putting it down here. Okay. Um, okay, so with the pen umbra, the um umbral cone is going to be to the right of the x-axis. Uh, in both of these cases, for the planet to see an eclipse, it's going to have to be to the left of T, meaning it's going to have to be on the negative x-axis. Um, right, because we've chosen T to be sort of at the zero point. Again, we don't mean the negative x-axis. We mean having an x-value lower than T does. If it doesn't have an x-value, nope, 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 we can't quite say that. Um, let's see, what can we say here? Um... Well, I guess that's what we need to discover. Uh, we need to sort of discover... Um, right, so if the planet has a positive x-axis value... Um, no, I think I think we can, we can assume it's going to have a negative x-value. Okay, so now we're going to um, see when does a planet get to be in the umbra. Uh, we're again going to assume that T and S are to the right. We're going to go ahead and move the uh, penumbra in our next diagram, the, the umbral or the penumbral point. Um, actually, sorry, the umbral point we're going to move to zero, or the penumbral point we're going to move to zero. And I think we'll have to handle these cases separately. Uh, I get the feeling that that's, uh, that's going to be a necessity here. And then we could say, um, now I guess we have to leave them the way they are, because we've computed their formulas, y equals mx plus b, and now we need to know um, whether the sphere is partially or completely within the umbra, or penumbra. Uh, let's see if we can copy this. Um, open, save. I mean, if I if I do this correctly, um, I might just be able to call this in Umbra, and then I have a copy of it. And if I do that correctly. Does it tell me which one I'm working on at any given time? So if I do that correctly, I should now be able to open uh, the in umbra. Umbra, penumbra. Uh, no, that didn't seem to work. Well, they have a lot of interesting examples here, but that's not... I'm not going to favorite one of my own. That seems a little bit too too much. Okay, hang on. Um, save, export image, share, download as, tools, can I clone the sucker? Um, file, save a copy as in Umbra, save. Oh, maybe you can't open the thing you're already in. Maybe that's the issue. I say that as though it were true, and I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and bring up a... No, no, be gone. God damn it. You want to draw lines everywhere. All right, let's see if we can do this. Now, GeoGebra 2D. Let's see if we can now load in Umbra. There are several versions of Umbra. Yeah. Uh, 1 January. This is... Um, can we copy the freaking things? Okay, so this is actually not supposed to be... Umbra looks like it's empty, which is not cool. So let me see if I can fix that. Oh, no, hang on. Um... Okay, somewhere it should actually be... T okay, so this is actually... Um, alrighty. This should not be this difficult. Um, 
I should be able to tell which one I'm in right now without having to go through a lot of garbage. Um, am I in Umbra or am I in, in Umbra? Oh, that's, that's good that I have actually messed that up. <sighs> Alright, so we're going to write this down here. We're going to say this is Umbra, I think. And then if in Umbra is different, I can, I'll can i trust that it's it's... If we modify it, we won't modify the original. No, I don't want to save it. I want to open it. Oh, unless you ask me if I want to save this one before I... So we're not going to save this. This is now in Umbra. Okay, maybe that one is in Umbra. Let's see what Umbra looks like. Getting a little frustrated here. Uh, let's open Umbra then. Okay, so they are. this is the Umbra, I think. This is the one that we're calling Umbra. So we're going to not modify this one. We're going to modify the other one, which says in Umbra. Okay. Or we just could do this back and forth forever. All right, in Umbra. And we're now back to MN, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so now we want to um, pretty much get rid of everything except the cone itself and the, uh, and the, known, um, the known equations. So let's do this. We can get rid of, in fact, we're getting rid of so much stuff, I'm beginning to wonder if it's, um, if it was worthwhile actually just not creating something new directly. But anyway. No, didn't mean to do that. Circle delete. Why? Oh, maybe it's because everything else depends on it. Maybe that's the whole issue. So if I delete stuff that doesn't depend on other stuff, I'm okay. Um, but if I delete stuff that, that is required to build other stuff, um, yep, I think that's it. Um, yeah, maybe it's time to start hiding some of this stuff. Let, I think we heard of this angle, though. I don't think this angle is dependent on anything. Okay, um... Let's just hide this sucker. And hide this sucker. And hide this sucker. Where are you? There you are. Hide this sucker. And the more I look at this, the more I realize it's not going to really do what I want. But anyway. Um. And I guess we don't really need this because we we're just looking at sort of an arbitrary umbra. Okay, and I think I'm going to need to pull P to the... or not. Um, oh, right, because it's defined as an intersection. Okay. So the problem here is only this part is the umbra because beyond this we have, like, T and stuff. Um... But let's see if we can still deal with this. Um, so now we're going to create a, a circle that represents our planet. Uh, and this one's going to be pretty mobile, actually. So let's say... Um, it's like two... A seg segment or two points radius, then center point. Circle through three points. Um, let's just do this. I mean, we're going to move this around. Okay. So this is our... Um, We. That's what I meant to do. Um, oh no, I guess I want to circle. Okay, good. This is actually good. I want to circle with a radius, and then we can move around the, the center of the circle. So we'll say circle, uh, center and radius, center, radius one. Okay? Okay. No. Um, almost right. 
circle definition. That's a point. The circle. I give up. So point D we don't need anymore. We never needed it. Okay. Uh, circle B1. Is B3 going to be too much here? Yeah, let's make it B2. And then point B I want to leave alone, but I don't think we need to... Oh, we actually want to probably change it to point Q, because it's the center of Q. Uh, we do not need E. We don't need to show that. Uh, we do want to show a radius. Um, but it doesn't really matter how we show it. Um, yeah, maybe I don't care. Maybe that's actually okay. So good. Now as we move Q around, we can move around the uh, the the um, the sphere. So now the question is: um, Notice that it's possible for the planet to be inside the umbra without the center being in the umbra. In fact, it's even possible for it to sort of peek out of the umbra. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but it's even possible for a portion of the planet to be in the umbra, even when the position right above this, us is not in the umbra, I think. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but let's see if we can do it better over here. Yeah, well, it's theoretically possible that this point here that's straight up isn't in the umbra, but portion still is in the umbra. So the question is, how do we determine whether or not um, a planet is within the umbra or not? Um, and I think we can safely assume that we have all of our... I well, you know, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and draw... S in this case, I guess we'll put Q at... We can't decide... We can't guarantee that Q is going to be on the... Um, we can't guarantee Q is going to be x-axis. We can't guarantee this either, actually. So let's put it over here. Sort of at a random... Well, let's see. Here, here... Somewhere that's at a random point in the sense that it's not necessarily on the x or y axes, because we can't guarantee that. Um, now we know the angle between p and this, and p and that, so I guess what we can do now is look for the angle between p and this point here, um, which, in other words, the point that's perpendicular to the to the to the line, and. Um, perpendicular to the umbral line and see if we can use that to sort of determine whether or not Q is within the um, Q is within the uh, this is the umbral version so this is whether Q is within the umbra um, so that's going to be that line there um, actually can we do this uh, I'm trying to find the sort of the, the angles between P and Q and the maximum and minimum possible angles and then we can compare them to the two umbral angles to see if, you know, a part of Q is between those two, all of Q is between those two, or whatever. Uh, in order to do that, I need to have a brain, which I do not, very sad. Um, it's obviously, we can compute the angle from, you know, from P to Q against the x-axis, that's not difficult. Um, but the, the tricky part here is going to be computing this angle that is, I guess maybe it's not that tricky actually, um, from P to the tangent line here of, of this. So, um, it's going to be a line that's tangent to this and goes through P, although something tells me something tells me this is going to be easier than it looks. We don't even need those. So all we need to do now is wait one get rid of this point. I don't know how the hell that got there. And now compute the angles. The only difference between this and the other diagrams is that Q is not lined up on the x-axis. But I think other than that, um, and we know it's x-position, so we can... What the hell is this? My breathing points? Um... So we want that angle. Um, yeah, let's see if we can draw this. I think we, I think we're good. Um, so.
So here we want tangents. A point or a line. So this guy and this guy. Gorgeous. Uh, and the angles we're going to want are from he um, Yeah, from the x-axis, because we've determined that p is um, p is uh, from the x-axis. Okay, so now we want um, we want this angle and we want this angle, and compared to x, and we want to compare them to the angles of the umbra itself. So let's see how we can. Do. We know this is a right angle. We know. Okay, let's go ahead and see what distances we know. We know the x and y position of Q, so we might actually be able to say this is... Um, yeah, let's maybe tweak this to say QX, QY, because we do know that. Okay. What? Oh, I didn't... I didn't save. QX, QY. Um, and I think we can just do this. Gorgeous. Okay. And now, can we do it like this? I'm trying to get it away from any of the, the possible radii that we need to draw here. Um, so let's go ahead and draw an angle from P to, to this point. I mean, that, that one I think we're going to need regardless. Uh, let's do it a vector from here to here. And you are not going to be called you. You're going to be called PQ. Yeah, I guess that is, a, that is something we know. So we, we can call this uh, PQ. We can make it red-ish. And I think that's good. Let's PQ. And I think we can already start to decide that our axes are not going to need numbers. Um, but I forgot how we did that last time. Here we are, graphics. X-axis. Okay. Alrighty. Now we know this line is a perpendicular, so we need to find this intersection point, which is easy. I mean, it's easy in, in, in the graphics. We need to find it in real life, too. Um, carry the five. I, that has no meaning. Um, so we want the uh, intersection point between this line and this circle. Circle, line, intersection, gorgeous. Uh, and we need it between this and this, which are going to be actually a little bit different. And this line, this circle. Also gorgeous. And now we need this and this are not collinear. Um, not that you would think they are, but, but they're not. So we'll do a vector from here to here, and a vector from here to here. Um, and see, the difference here is this is not symmetric around the x-axis. That's the that's a sort of special uh, thingamabob that we have. Um, and then we need... Well, this is this is QY and this is QX. We know that. So we don't really need that. But um, let's go ahead and we don't need a label for these points. Um, oh, I didn't know I could turn off the label that easily. And we do need to kind of mess with these vectors a little bit. For one thing, uh, that is QR. That is the. Um, actually, you got to be careful. That we will make that a caption because um, um, because we're going to have two of them that are named QR. No, oh, no, 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 no. Bad, bad. Okay, QR. Um, let's try that again. The color here can be two, 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 two. Let's make that blue. No, we already have blue. Let's make that the sort of funky... Nope. I like that color. And let's see if we can move QR a little bit to the right there. And over here... This caption is going to be QR, and we're going to use the caption 
Um, and we're going to go ahead and make this one blue as well. There we go. Okay. And I guess we do not need these lines going on forever. So let me go ahead and draw a line segment and get rid of the, uh, once again, get rid of the uh, tangent lines that we have. So, segment from P to unnamed, segment from P to other unnamed. Um, nope, 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 nope. And then we select this sucker which is one of the tangent lines, we make it invisible. We select this tangent line, make it invisible. Um, and the other two lines we definitely want to be visible, but we don't necessarily want them to have labels. Okay, and quickly we think we need this a little bigger actually now. Okay. So we're trying to find the angle, be a little bit careful here. Um, because all the angles we have for the penumbra and the umbra, wherever the hell that is, there it is, are from the uh, x-axis. So we do need to make sure that this is also from the x-axis. So we will have, um, we'll have this length here and I think I think we can do this. Let's go ahead and draw one more vector. And we'll go ahead and draw this vector from... Um oh, crap. I mean, I could draw it from here to here, but I actually need to draw it from here to the x-axis. And I don't know if I know what that coordinate is. Well, I guess we'll have to find it. Okay, and I and I do not want to do it like this. I God damn it. Okay. Um, so is there a way to draw a line straight down in some sense? Um, parallel line? No. Uh, what do I want? I want a, want a horizontal line. Uh, sorry, a vertical line. Um, yeah. So that's probably not great. Um, let's see. Perpendicular body sector, parallel line, perpendicular line. Uh, I guess there's no drop to the x-axis line. Um... Oh, I think I can make it perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, and then intersecting... Select point and perpendicular line, okay. Point and perpendicular line. Holy crap, that worked. I mean, of course that worked. I knew that was going to work. Alright, and now we actually want to do a point here, that's the intersection point. Um, of this and this, okay. And now we do not need to, we, we can now create a line segment that goes from here to here. Um, now we can go to this line. Nope, that's what I meant to do. Now we can go to this long line that we don't no longer need. Let's see what happens if we do that. We also get rid of, I knew that was going to happen. Um, so instead of getting rid of it, we're just going to make it invisible. Okay. Um, this line is not going to be named P. We do need a name for it, though. Um, we don't want to name it X or Y. Um, and a good name for it would be Y, because that's what it, that's what it is. Um, but I don't think it likes us. Well, I guess we could still call it Y. Uh... You know what? I'm not really happy with this. Let's not do that. Instead, we can try to look at the coordinates of this point here. Um, so let's see what we know from here. 
Um, and again, these are the two angles that'll make up the uh, where the planet is. Okay. So what do we know here? Not a hell of a lot. Uh, we could, if we could rotate this, would be kind of nice. But let's not do that right now. Um, oh, we do know the slope of both of these lines is... Um, no, we don't. We know the slope of this line. Uh, we know this, this, and we know... Um, I think we can figure out what this point is here. So let's see. Using the wonderful law of laws. No. Um, this angle opposite over adjacent. This angle opposite over. So this is a. Um, this is apparently an isosceles triangle, even though it doesn't really look like one. Um, so what we want is this angle here, this, this, this. Um, we can compute that angle and based on that we can compute this length. Uh, doesn't really help us. Um, uh, if we compute that length and we know this length and we know this, we can... Um, So if we compute this length, um, this is not a hard problem. Um, in theory, I could drop this perpendicular here, but I don't know if we could figure out what that value there is, like from there to there. Um, let's see. So we have this, this, this. We know the um, QX, QY. We knew QR. We know... Oh, yeah. If we know this angle, I think we can get to this point here. So let's go ahead and... And we can get that angle. Let's go ahead and create it, though, as an angle. Starting here, going through here, and then coming back to here. Uh, once again, I've done it in the wrong direction. Let's try that again. We're going to start here, go here, and then come back to here. Um, need to make it a lot bigger. We don't need a label on it. Oh wow, that's the biggest it's going to get. Okay, well that's fine. Oh, well, I guess we do need a name for it. We're just going to call it angle. That's, we've been calling them all angle U, so why don't we just continue with that lovely, um, with that lovely convention. And this is also going to be angle U, although it's not as clear that it's going to... Well, it is actually, because it's... Um, opposite over adjacent is also going to be QR over PQ. Alright, so we know this, this, let's see, um, QR over PQ, so we can figure out this length, which does, which we could anyway, because it's by the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so what does that actually give us? Knowing that angle, we determine the coordinates of this point. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So that lets us also know this angle, which is uh, not a right angle, because this is a right angle. If we know this angle, and we do know this slope, probably figure out this slope. Um, hmm. So we're going to draw this line here. Uh, And it would go up, like, over here. Uh, let's see. 
do have P at the origin. We don't. We do know the slope of PQ. It, it's um, well, it's QI over QX. Uh, oh, actually, we we do have this P over here at the negative, don't we? We we don't have it at the at the x-axis. Um, I don't think that's a huge deal, though. Let's see, QX, QY. Um, and if we do a rigid rotation here, we should have something like this. Um, and then all we have to do is rotate it back to here. And and that is the um, that is the transform of the rotation is we basically move the x axis by a certain number of degrees uh, to do this. The number of degrees being q y over q x. Um, oh, yes. We know this angle here. We 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 only I'll need to put it out, but. From here to here, we know that angle because we know the slope of PQ, and therefore we know the uh, the tangent of the bigger angle. We'll draw it here in a sec. Uh, let's see. Mm, let's, see, let's, see, let's, see let's see. Yes, I think that's how we're going to do this. So once we figure out this big angle here, we know this angle. Therefore, we know this angle, um, and therefore we know everything we need to know at that point. All right, let's do that. All right, so we're going to drop a perpendicular from QX to Q. Uh, to the um, to the x-axis, which we know is qx. I mean, that's not a that's not a huge huge uh, huge big deal there. Um, I'm gonna be really really careful what I'm doing here. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and um, line segment segment vector vector line. Um, perpendicular line. So it's going to go through this point and be perpendicular to this axis. There we go. Um, and then we don't really need the whole thing. We're just going to go ahead and create an intersection point here. Intersect this with this to get there. And then we already have QX, QY, so we don't need anything else there. Um, Draw the line segment from here to here. And then make this invisible. And we don't, well, let's see. We know the length of this is QX. We don't probably even need to say, a uh, QY rather. So I don't think we need to say that. And I don't think we need this Q here. I don't even know what it's labeling. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so now we don't know this angle because we don't know where this point is, but we do know this bigger angle. So let's see if I can draw that bigger angle. Um, I can even do it correctly this time. From here to here to here. Um, and we're going to have to make it a different color, obviously. First of all, no label. Different color. And I think we're going to run into a problem here. Because if I make this This one I want to make the full size. Do I want to make line? Not line opacity, right? That's it's different. Um, line thickness is fine. So now I'm going to have to go back to the other angle and make it smaller. Unless there's a way to really, um, really crank this thing down. Mm. Mm. That looks kind of cool. We'll keep it. So now we're going to go ahead and mess with this one. 
And the first thing we have to do is we're going to shrink down its size a little bit. And let's see if we can change it so it's a little does a little cute little arrowy thing. That's actually not great with that one. All right, and then I think all I got to do is move you there. And I guess we're going to call this angle V because I just said it like I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Let's go ahead and call it angle V. We will caption it V and we will use the caption as its name. And we will move the caption to someplace much more useful like here. I mean, what would be really nice here is if we could somehow do this in like, um, I wonder if we can make this line thinner. I think we can, if actually, if we want. That's nice, actually. Okay, and if we're going to do that, we might as well make this line thinner, because it is somewhat equivalent-ish. Not really. Make that line thickness one. Oh, does that... Now, see, they don't look like they're the same freaking thickness now. Oh, there we go. Um, angle U, angle V. Um, now, again, I'm going to get caught up in doing this where I mess with this forever, so I'm going to try to avoid going to... I think that looks good. And I think... This is going to look good. I'm going to just basically decide it's going to look good. Nope, nope, not three, two. You're good. Oh, and I guess because I had them selected, they look a little bit different. Okay, so now our, do we have enough information to compute? Um, the angle we want is, um, in some sense, this angle here, the beginning angle. And then we want this, the, the higher of the two angles. We want the lower of the two angles here, this sucker here, which is now going to be v minus u. Does it get a name? And the other one is just going to be whatever that is plus 2u um, because this is, and this is better carry the 5. Um, that angle is going to be opposite over a arctan, arctan, so I think we're okay there. Alright, so what we need to do now is figure out this angle, but to do that we need to figure out angle v. Angle v getting back to our uh, Getting back to our little uh, diagram thingy. Uh, let's see what we're talking about here. So angle V. Um, oh, that's just the slope of the line. So that's just going to be uh, the arc tangent of QY over QX. Do I want to put a line there to indicate that I'm doing something? Uh, no, I don't think I care. Yeah, I don't think that I care that I'm doing that. So anyway, um, V is going to be the arctan of QI over QX. And if we were being really cautious here, we would use the two-form argument, the two-argument form. We're not going to be that cautious, though. Um, and okay. I'm going to maybe pretend that P is at the zero point. Um, because what I said here is only correct uh, if P is at zero. Otherwise, we have this sort of extra, um, I guess that's going to be PT, because T is going to be right there. Um, oh, no, 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 T is going to be way over here somewhere. So this is, um, let's make this a little bit, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and make this from P being at the origin. Uh, why do I not like this? What's weird about this? Okay. Um. Right. So. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to look at the angles. We're going to have to treat P as being at zero. Let's do that. Intersection of F and G, whatever the hell that is. 
Okay. Can we move the entire axes to the left? Um... I mean, we don't have to show the y-axis, we can do this. Um... Can I? I don't think this is going to let me shift the axes. Yeah, it's not. Um... So I think I goofed here. because I did want to make P the sort of the um, the origin. So can we fix that? What are FMG to begin with anyway? I guess we can find out from here. Oh, that's right. We have a whole bunch of crap going on here. Uh, that we did not, um, that we, because we thought we were going to copy, um, we thought we were going to copy the, uh, the umbral stuff and bring it over here. Uh, so we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and, uh, do what we did earlier, which is basically, um, show you how much of a waste of time this has all been by, if I can figure out how to do it, deleting all of it. Why, why, why can't I do that? Why can't I multi-select? I select, delete, we have nothing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just, because um, now we're not even interested in what the umbral cone looks like, we just want to know the angles of the, uh, of the planet. As measured from P and the X axis. So I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a nice little, um, a nice little circle. Um, and I think we decided this was going to be our nice little circle here. And now we need to draw your mama. No, we don't need to draw your mama. And this is going to be Q. This won't take that long actually because we're, we're pretty much, uh, we know what we're doing. Okay. Oh, well, I don't care, really. Uh, so now we're going to draw a line from the origin, which I guess we need to put a point at the origin to call P. Um, what's the point? What's the point? I don't know what the point is. And I guess we decided Q is going to be named... Um, we're going to give it by its, um, well, the name's fine. We're going to call it QX comma QY, which is its position with reference to the umbral point, which is, I guess, okay. We're, we can clean up some of this later on. Uh, we're just trying to get the idea of what we're doing here. Okay. Now we want a line that's going to draw, we want to draw sort of the, um, the intersection lines. Um... Line. Oh wait. Um. No, yeah, we're gonna draw tangent lines. Um. Between P and this guy, there should be two of those. There we go. And we don't want the whole thing, so we're going to do our little trick here of creating a point of the intersection of this that's not what I meant to do intersect this guy and this guy intersect this guy and this guy get rid of A now hang on, we're going to have to be careful here okay um, and so now we want a line segment Actually, I think we can make this, um, these, um, this line here invisible. 
and that line invisible. And we certainly don't need this point. But now we can just draw a line from P to B and P to C, knowing that they're perpendicular. So we have line segment from P to B and from P to C. Um, and we don't really need uh, to have uh, don't really need to have labels for them, but I want to draw my vector first. So we're a vector from P to Q, and then I'm going to draw my other vector from here to here, and then from here to here, and then I'm going to draw my um, the straight this line and this line, which we happen to know will be qx and qy in, in length. Um, so let's see, parallel. Yeah, it's, I think it's a perpendicular. Perpendicular line. So we want it perpendicular to this guy. And, nope, not what I wanted. Perpendicular line. So point and line. Booyah. Um, and then I guess one line that's parallel, and we need to actually define this intersection point as being the... Uh, we need to point, right? Yeah, point. That is the intersection of two things. It's the intersection of this and this. And then I need for it to go from here to here and here. That's not too bad. Uh, so we have a vector going from P to A. And then we have another vector going from A to C. All right, now we have a ton of crap. And that's some crap we don't want. Be gone. And you be gone. And I be gone back to this mode here where I can't mess with things too much. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Um, oh, we zoomed in too much. Zoom out. Okay. And... Uh, don't show label. None of these get to show labels. Okay. Not sure you get to show a label, we just have to give it a different name. Um, no label free. Oh, actually, this one we need to, um, we need to hide this thing. Because we only want to see the part of it that we need which is there. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is how you trisect an angle. No, it's not. I guess I can't whisper that part. No, it's not how you uh, trisect an angle. Uh, that is a lie. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, mess with this one first. The um, QR will be the caption. The color will be what I really need to stop calling the semi-gay color here. Um, this over here. Then let's go over here. We'll make this semi-gay. I, I really am going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? At some point. Um, that's also QR in length because it's a radius of the circle. Um, we do not need this point B. We do not need this point C. To be labeled at least, we do need it to exist. Um, sort of obvious that this is going to be um, QY in length because it's literally defined that way. Um, but I want to give it a shiny color, so we'll give it a shiny color here. Um, and then it's even more obvious this is going to be QX, but you know what the hell. And I guess you get the same shiny color, which I will be calling the that color, the non-gay color. And we don't need you. We don't need a label here. Okay, so this is QX, QY. Um, and I guess this guy needs a name PQ and a color. Ok, 
Okay, and a color that is um, green. No, it's too a little bit, a little bit more masculine green. There we go. Ah. Can we go even like more gay, less gay? I think that's significantly between gay and not gay. Trying to move the frickin' label now. Apparently I can't move the label, hang on. Whoa, there we go. Okay. So let's see if we have everything that we need. Um, the angles we want to find are this angle and this huge angle here. Uh, this angle we can compute. This angle we can compute because it, we know it's uh, uh, arc tan. And so we can compute... Um, no, this is wrong. This is not QI. Um, that would be QI all the way up there, huh? This isn't QX either. Um, so no, that's not what I wanted. I want... Yeah, this is bogus. We actually want this line to be... Um, yeah, this is, this is bogus. Sorry, we want a line from QX going down to um, down to here because these we're computing the angles very differently from each other. All right, one more time. Uh, perpendicular line from here to here. Um, intersection point from here to here. Um, vector line from here, and this is the one that's after QX and Y. And another vector line from here to here. Um, and that's actually where it becomes useful to start coloring these things. So this is QY, and this is the one that needs to be in the semi, no, nope, little gear, a little less gay. There we go. Same for you. What the hell was that? Hang on. Mistake, error, p problem. What the hell? Okay, maybe I should stop trying to mess with more than one at a time. QY. And the color will be this color. Too gay. That's fine. And now it's actually clear that this is the, um, oh, that's too close to the, uh, that's too close to being black. Hang on. Maybe I should make that in the same color I have this. All right. I'm trying to keep it not, I'm trying to not overdo this, but at the same time, I would like to get, um, Oh, that's a good looking damn color. All right. And so this is going to be QX uh, in the same color. And the color is going to be this beautiful sort of periwinkle thing. Oh, that's even nicer. Okay. And yes, I realize I am have gone sort of crazy on the color thing right now. Okay, I think those are the same color. Um, QY and oh, and I need to get rid of this thing here. I need to un um, stop showing it. Okay, here we go. There we go. And this guy does not need a label. Okay. 
So here it's curved. This is QY, this is QX. Um, it'd be nice if we make it clear that this whole line is QY, but it's the same color, so that should help. Uh, and now we can start figuring out some angles. We can figure out this angle here, which is just going to be the, let's go ahead and do that one, angle, go from here to here to here. And all sorts of editing going on here. We do not want it labeled. We do want it to be purple. Um, and we do want it to be huge. Um, okay. And we do want to have it, well, actually we do want to give it a name. Um, this will be angle U. And, right, and this is where we decided that in order to make angle U show up nicely and make it clear that it's this, we're going to make these lines a lot thinner. Um, I think we decided one was too thin, two was the exact right number. And so we'll go ahead and move this one to two. All right, there we go. That's angle U. Um, actually, maybe we can make this one the smaller one and the other one the bigger one. Uh, let's go style. Let's actually get this a little bit over here so we can see what we're doing. Um, so that is angle U, and now the other angle we can compute, uh, PQ, well, it's going to be this, this, to this. It's going to be this, this, and this guy. And that's going to be angle, I think last time we called it angle V U and the other one V, but it doesn't really matter. Um, settings, you get to be angle V, and you get to be huge. So you can be the one that, uh, there we go. And let me paranoid check to see if I'm still streaming. One sec here. Whee, whee. What? Uh-oh. There we are. Okay. And so this is angle V. Oh, actually, I guess I need to get out of this before I can change it. All right. What the hell? I really, really need to do better with that. Settings. Um, color's fine. Style. Huge. Oh, I guess not that huge. Uh, label. V. X out. Now it's fixed. Angle V. And I guess it's still not super clear that this is angle U. Um, let me see if I can make these. If I make these really not thick, um, like this. That's way too thick. Well, if I do this, does that help? Um, and I think this looks fine. So that's angle U and that's angle V. Um, the angle we want here is this one, which we don't give a name to, but it's V minus W, obviously. V minus U, I mean, obviously. All right, so now let's see if we can get some, uh, some stuff going here. Um, yeah. I think we're in good shape now. All right, let's go back over here to this diagram. And so now it's going to be, I think U is going to be the arc tangent of opposite over adjacent. Good stuff. V is going to be um, QR. So hang on, got to be a little bit careful here. This is our right angle. Oh, 
Let's go ahead and draw our other right angles here. P, this thing, this thing, right angle. We don't want a label on it, but aside from that, it looks good. And here, here, nope. Um, here, here, here. Did I forget to put it in the angle thing? Okay, here, here, here. And again, no label on that sucker, but it is right angle. Oh, I thought I said no label on you. Okay, and let's go ahead and go back to this mode so we don't accidentally overwrite anything. Okay, so we have um, those right angles there. This is a right, I guess we should probably point out this is a right angle too. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but let's go ahead and do it. Don't show, what? No, no, I said don't show your label. And in this case, I think we do need to change its color to match the uh, to match the other two. I think that's right. All right. So we have that right angle, that right angle, that right angle. Okay. And so for V, the um, V opposite over hypotenuse, QR over PQ. And then, not that we really need it, but this angle here uh, has the um, opposite, same thing, it's the same angle. Um, because this, if we were to draw these lines in together, this would be an isosceles triangle. Um, because they share this side, this, these two lengths, and they share a right angle. And so this length and this length would be... That seems hard to believe, though. But I guess it has to be true, because math says so. Uh, well, these are both radii of this circle. They don't look the same length, though, do they? Um, I mean, this one looks longer, but a straight line from the center of a circle to its, to its, uh, to its uh, edge is a radii. All right, so now we have the lower angles being V minus U. Um, and we need to kind of get rid of the other variables we had to find, so we want to just make this very clean. Um, Did I get a PR in there somehow? I did. Um, v is equal to um, opposite QR over hypotenuse PQ. QR over PQ. Yeah, that's what I meant. Now the question is, do we know what the arc sine of u is? I mean, ooh. Opposite? Yeah, we do actually. So it's the arc sine of qy over pq. I don't think that actually helps us any. Um, the one who looks nice because now we have them both in terms of of PQ, um, but I don't think that, that, in this case, there's no real cancellation or anything interesting that happens. Okay, and the angle we want, the starting angle is V minus U, which I don't think simplifies. I mean, I'd be very surprised if this simplified. Yeah, I didn't think it would. Um, so that's sort of the lower, god damn it, so maybe this is not really cutting and pasting correctly. Okay, so that's the lower angle here. The lowest angle we get is V minus U, which doesn't simplify, obviously, unless there's some 
really weird formula here that uh, I don't know about that lets you combine arc signs. I don't think there is actually, to be honest. Um, I mean, I don't see an I immediately an easy way to measure this angle uh, without going through this. And then the maximum angle is going to be, um, well, I mean, this angle plus V. Um, so it's going to be U plus V. Yeah, that makes sense. U plus V. And again, I really don't think this is going to simplify. Yeah, did not see that happening. Right, so the median angle here is arc sine QR over PQ, plus or minus, um, plus or minus the uh, this angle here, which is which is V, which we've computed. So how does this help us? Well, now if we know from P what the umbral, so actually we don't, we're not actually going to even need the slope necessarily, because we're doing this all with angles. Um, so now we can say where the uh, whether the uh, planet is within the umbra or not, provided that we maintain our orientation such that um, such that the um, that we have s to the right of t and both to the right of the planet. Um, so, like over here, we have s to the right of t, and the planet is going to be in here somewhere. And if it's not in here. Um, it's actually kind of, I don't, I don't see that there's going to be anything interesting happening if it's a tier to the right. So I think we're okay there. Uh, we have this, we have the penumbra, all the way over here. Again, planet must be the left of, of T for this to make sense. Um, and we can determine based on, because we know what this is, we know what these angles are because we computed them just a second ago. Um, I think we now have, oh, do we need to put a little bit of a, um, I guess if we wanted to, we could probably put in um, what U and V are equal to. Um, let's see, I don't really want to do that, and it is, um, God, I've been streaming for another two hours. Seriously? Do I have a life? Oh, apparently not. I mean, all right, thank you for watching the stream. I am going to go ahead and call it for now. I think with these diagrams, we're going to have a much easier time uh, computing eclipses back in the uh, C program. Um, one thing I wanted to put on the stream to-do list, won't ever happen, um, um, let's see. And I guess we'll put this, I don't think we're going to stream again today, so we'll put this as first day of next year. Um, there is a way to insert Python into C, so we might be able to steal some of Brandon Rhodes' Skyfield stuff and put it into C-Spice. And that would, be, uh, that would be really useful for, for example, um, where we're looking at what constellation something is in. Even though I don't think Brandon's code is that difficult for that, um, it might be sort of an interesting thing to see if we can sort of meld it uh, with the uh, C code that we have. Okay, thank you for watching the stream, and uh, I will probably see you in, well, the same year, because we're in GMT on this uh, VM, uh, but I'll see you later. Thank you.